so today I'm making a video for my friend Holly um, but I'm gonna put it on my YouTube just for anyone that has had uh, wrist issues um, so she had a broken wrist um, a few months ago or so so I don't know really where you're at exactly Holly but we're gonna stay pretty much off the wrists I'm gonna show just a few stretches um, and then a few different ways that you might modify in postures I, I might go into um, without flexing the wrists. But I, I don't think that, Holly, I don't think you can put any weight on there in that way either. So um, if you have a wrist injury, obviously listen to your doctor and what they've told you um, that you can do with it and your exercises that you've been given. And then just kind of modify where you need to if we get into something that isn't feeling right. So we will start in a seated position. And first I'm just going to go through some movement to stretch the wrist out. So again, if you've had an injury and you can't uh, do these movements yet, then you can just let that wrist relax. So just don't push yourself too far. So let's just start in a seated position. You could be sitting on your heels, you could be sitting cross-legged any way that's comfortable. I'm just going to stay on my heels. I'm just finding that tall spine. Start to close the eyes. And just take a few bigger breaths. Just that natural inclination for the breath to deepen, to settle you into the space. Right? So you kind of have that sensation of wanting to take a bigger breath in and out, just to settle us in. And then you can return to normal breaths. And just simply notice how the body's feeling. You notice how the breath is feeling. Notice how the wrists are feeling. Relaxing areas of tension. If you feel the upper and lower molars tightly clenched, release there. Let the tongue fall away from the roof of the mouth. Eyes relax as they gently blink open. Good, and then just start to give yourself a few shoulder rolls, shoulders forward, up and back. Breathing. And then shoulders forward, up, back, down, and relax. And we'll just start circling through the wrists a few times. So it'll just lift the arms, just with palms gently open, just circle through and kind of just feel it out. Right? So if it's not feeling, if you've had an injury and you don't have that range of motion back yet, just don't do it. Circle directions. Good. And then pause, palms, palms open. Take the thumb inside the palm, four fingers come over top of the thumb and then circle. And if the wrist, if you have not had that injury, try to find the full range of motion of your wrist. So make those circles, hit every, um, every line in the circle so you're not kind of skipping a piece of the circle. Switch directions. And then we're gonna release. And then if it feels okay, just shake. Okay, great. Again, it might not feel okay for you. You've had that injury, so don't do it if it hurts. But just shaking, they say, can help carpal tunnel. Shaking the um, hands and wrists here, increasing blood flow to hands and wrists. And then pause, open hands again. We're gonna take the four fingers in. Thumb comes on top this time. Find the circles. Just notice how that might feel different than when the thumb was in. Just noticing. Switch directions. And then pause, and then shake. And then let the arms relax down. And then the shoulders come back, up, forward, down, and then circling. Just releasing tension. And then relax, shoulders down and back. And then we're gonna shift onto our backs. So just let the legs come out, rolling onto the back of the body. And once you're on your back, Take the knees into the chest. Give the knees a hug here. Hands might grab to shins and just a little rock back and forth. 
And then we're going to keep the hands to interlace at the right shin. So the left foot drops down to the floor. Hug that right knee toward the right side rib cage. Keep the right shoulders, right shoulder relaxed. Pause. So we're going to start circling through that right ankle. Just finding some circles there. Drawing those circles with that right big toe. And again, just like we thought about with the wrist, try to hit that whole circle so you're not, you're trying to make that big, perfect circle if it feels okay in the ankle. Switch directions. So the brain, right, focusing on making that circle and then also feeling that muscle on the shin, muscles around the ankles, getting a little bit of work and then pause, relax. We're going to keep pulling that right knee toward the right side of the cage. And then if it feels okay, you might extend through that left leg, left heel presses toward the top of your mat. Keeping that left foot flexed, pause and breathe here. Just a few deep breaths. Opening through the front of the pelvis, one more inhale. And then exhale, bring the sole of that left foot back down to the mat. Bring the right ankle to the left knee. Take the arms out in a T or cactus. Pause here, keep the right foot flexed. This you might feel stretched at that outer right hip, so just kind of pause and feel that out. And then we're gonna use the abdomen to help control and stabilize the movement. You're gonna to roll to the outer edge of the left foot and take the legs over to the left. Keep the chest opening toward the ceiling. The sole of the right foot might touch down to the floor. And then inhale, use the belly with control, bring it back to center. And you're gonna to roll to the inside of that left foot. That right knee will come toward the floor. It doesn't have to touch all the way. Inhale, center. Exhale to the left side. Inhale, center. Exhale to the right. Inhale, center. And then exhale. Legs are coming over to your left. The sole of the right foot relaxes down to the floor. And then just let go of the legs. Pause. Breathing here, just keep the gaze centered, looking up. One more deep, full breath in, expand breath into the right side of the cage as best you can. And then exhale, release. Breathe in, bring the legs back to center. And pause, so you're back to center with the right ankle on the left knee. And then just press that right heel toward the ceiling. And then the right leg does not have to straighten all the way, so the right knee could be bent. Just moving the right leg towards straight, keeping the right foot flexed. And then we're going to take the hands to interlace behind that right thigh. Again, maybe the knee's bent, it's okay. Just kind of wake the hamstring up a little bit there. And then release. Right knee to chest, left knee to chest, hands to the kneecaps. We're going to let the big toes touch. Let the knees open out to the sides. And then they're going to move away from the body. And then bring the knees back toward each other. And then knees back into the chest. Continue finding those circles. Knees open toward that butterfly shape. Move away from you. They come back together and back to the chest. Big circles. Opening up through the hips and inner thighs. Switch directions with the circles. And then hug those knees back into the chest. Sway back and forth a couple times. We're going to reach the hands to interlace around that left, left shin or thigh. So the right foot drops down. Shoulders stay relaxed down to the floor. Pause, left knee toward left side rib cage. Give it a little hug in, feel the pelvis opening here. Just getting some broadness across that space. Start to circle through the left ankle, drawing those circles with the left big toe. So again, a little exercise for the brain, trying to draw that big circle, and then the ankle, the muscles around the ankle that support that movement. Switch directions with the circles. Breathing, and then relax that left foot. Just let it relax and release. Keep hugging the left knee down, and you might lengthen through the right leg. You don't have to. 
If it's too much, keep the foot on the floor. Right heel reaches toward the top of the mat, right foot stays flexed. So making sure this feels okay for the back. Take a couple of big breaths here. Keeping the shoulders relaxed, keeping the face quiet. One more inhale. And exhale, rebound the right knee, so the foot comes back down to the floor. Left ankle moves to the right knee. Flex the left foot, pause for a moment. Arms come open into T or cactus. And keeping that left foot flexed, just kind of feel if you feel a stretch at the outer left hip, just noticing that. We're going to breathe in here, keep the shape of the legs, exhale. Hold to the outer edge of the right foot, legs drop over to the right side, just toward that direction. Breathe in, use the belly to bring them back to center. Exhale, roll to the inside of that right foot, legs drop over to the left. Inhale to center. Exhale, keep flexing the left foot, lengthening through the femur. Inhale to center. Exhale to the left. And then breathe into center. Exhale, legs come over to that right side. We're going to pause. We're going to stay there this time so you can let the sole of that left foot slide down to the floor. Let the legs relax. You're still keeping kind of the general shape, but let them relax in that direction. Chest is opening toward the ceiling. Pause and breathe. Keeping the gaze just straight up. One more big breath, breathe into the left side rib cage. Draw the breath into that space as best you can. Exhale, release the breath. Inhale, use the belly, bring those legs back to center. Pause, you're back at center, so the right foot down to the floor. Keep the left foot flexed. And then you're just gonna draw that left leg toward straight, press the left heel toward the ceiling. So again, it doesn't have to straighten all the way. If it does, great, go for it. But we're just waking up through the hamstring a little bit. Maybe kind of play with bending and straightening just for a moment. One more big inhale here. And then exhale. Bring that knee into the chest. Bring the right knee into the chest. Hug the knees and rock back and forth. Slide the hands onto the kneecaps. This time, feet are hip width. Toes are not touching. Right knee draws in toward you as the left knee draws away. And then the knees are going to open both away from you, opening nice and wide there, open through the hips. And then the left knee draws in toward you back to hip width, right knee away. And then continue, switch, right knee toward you, left away. Open nice and wide toward that butterfly shape, back to hip width, left knee in, right away. And then see if you can find that movement a little more fluid. Right, so again, working here. The brain a little bit there as we find that. If you've just found it and it still feels kind of awkward and funky, stay with it. If you have it and it feels easy, switch directions. Right in and hug the knees in. And sway back and forth. And we're going to come up to a seat. Swing the legs off. And then we're just going to come on to, just, you can sit back on your knees for a moment. So this is where I'll just show um, a modification. So Holly, I don't think you're probably there yet, but um, if you, some people just have issues with flexing the wrists. So a way that you can modify in a yoga class is you can use, it's actually a mudra too, but you can use your fists. So you could tuck the thumb inside the fist that we were doing before. And the fist could ground down. So like if you were in a class and they were doing cat and cows with the palms down, you could take your fist to the mat here. Thumbs could be out of, of the fist too, but uh, it's more stable with the thumbs and the fist there. And you could take your cat and cows here. Right, inhaling, open, exhaling down. And you can use that in a lot of poses, you know, like triangle pose or side angle, anywhere where you're using, where we kind of using the arm down in that position, a lot of those places anyway, you could use the fist. So that's just a little tip. You could take some cat and cows there. All right, we're gonna come down to the forearms just to get completely off of uh, weight pressing in that direction. So from your knees, come down to the forearms, shoulders over the elbows, palms reach straight out, on those elbows and palms flat on the mat, just nice and gentle there. And then hips over the knees. 
So we're going to take some cat and cows here. It feels a lot different than cat and cow on uh, hands and knees. So inhale, reach the chest forward, lift the tail. Exhale, round the back. Gaze toward knees. Inhale, open the chest forward, rolling the shoulders back gently. Exhale, round. Navel draws in, gaze toward knees. And just a few more times, inhaling forward. Exhale round. One more time. Inhale forward. Exhale round. Breathing in, come to neutral. Walk the knees back. Keep walking them back till the hips lower all the way down to the mat, and you end up in Sphinx pose. Sphinx pose, um, elbows underneath the shoulders, palms forward. Or you can have the elbows forward of the shoulders if the back needs a little more space. Press the elbows down into the mat. And then the shoulders have that tendency to kind of want to round forward there to help us. But think about rolling the deltoid muscle back. Like if you could have someone adjust you there, roll that back to facilitate the chest opening forward. Pause, reach the tailbone toward the heels. So you're pressing the elbows into the mat, you're opening the chest forward, reaching the tailbone toward the heels. If it feels okay, drop the chin toward the chest. Keep those actions though, the chest is still opening. Get some length through the back of the neck. Keep the tailbone reaching back, right ear toward right shoulder, nice and slow, really gentle. Chin to chest, left ear, left shoulder, only if it feels okay. Chin to chest, keep rolling back and forth, press the elbows into the mat as you move, right ear to right shoulder. Chin to chest, tailbone's reaching back, left ear to left shoulder. Chin to chest, chest is opening forward, pause. Breathe in, take the gaze just between the hands. And then just slightly forward of the fingertips, take a deep inhale. Exhale, stack the palms forward, comes down to the back of the hands. Sway through the hips. Forehead to the backs of hands. Is what I meant to say there. Bend the knees, crisscross through the shins. It's early on a quarantine day. Legs relax back down behind you. And then we're gonna shift back up onto the forearms. Elbows underneath the shoulders, palms to the floor. Find that sphinx pose again. Okay, so we're opening the chest forward, reaching the tail back, pressing into the elbows to lift. Think about the center of the chest, trying to reach forward and then up just slightly. Keep the tailbone reaching back though, it's so easy to lose that. Take a deep breath in, exhale, bend the right knee, flex the right foot over the right shoulder for the right heel. Inhale, bring it back to center, right leg lowers down. Exhale, bend the left knee, look over the left shoulder for that left heel. Inhale, back to center. One more time on each side, exhale to the right, still reaching the tail back, exhale, inhale to center. Exhale to the left, still pressing the elbows into the mat. Inhale to center, pause, next breath in. See if you can reach the chest forward and glide up just a little bit more. Exhale, stack the palms, forehead comes down, bend the knees, windshield the shins back and forth. Let the legs relax down, sway through the hips. And then we're going to come up, make your way into child's pose. So again, a lot of times we climb to the wrist there. Maybe you use just the forearms. Big toes touch, heels separate. And just walk the forearms forward a little bit so you could stay right here. Or you could come into full child's pose. It's up to you. Find somewhere that's comfortable. Pause, take a few deep breaths. back up to a seat and then we'll make your way into standing coming up to standing at the front of the mat my feet hip width arms down by your sides give yourself a few of those shoulder rolls again just arriving back here to standing maybe those few bigger breaths to get there shoulders relaxing down the back 
Finding that neutral pelvis. Inhale, reaching the arms alongside the ears. Exhale, keep them there, plug the shoulders in. Inhale, lift the gaze between the hands. Exhale, stay here. Two more breaths. Inhale, reaching through the fingertips. Exhale, rooting through all four corners of the feet. One more inhale, grow a little bit taller. Exhale, look forward, bend the knees, coming into chair pose, reaching forward, palms dialed toward each other and slightly toward the ceiling. Weights in the heels, but the toes are still on the mat there. Take another deep breath in here, and then exhale, we'll come into standing forward bend, legs move towards straight, hands reach down for the floor, let the head drop. Legs don't have to straighten, you can leave them nice and bent. Pause, give the head a couple shakes, yes and no. Breathing in, lift up halfway, hands come to shins, pause, plug shoulders in. Exhale, fold forward again, standing forward bend. We're going to come back into chair pose, bend the knees even more. Sink the weight into the heels, engage the glutes, feel the glutes turn on nice and active, reach the arms forward, flat back, palms toward each other, slightly toward the ceiling. Pause. Next breath in, straighten the legs, reach and look up. Exhale, empty your heart. Arms relax down by your sides, two times with breath. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, look forward, bend knees, chair pose. Just passing through this time, end up in standing forward bend at the bottom of the breath. Inhale, lift up halfway, flat back. Exhale, fold forward, navel draws in. Bend the knees, sink back, engage glutes. Inhale, pass through chair pose, rise up to standing, reach and look up. Exhale, hands through heart. Arms relax down. One more time, inhale, reach and look up. Exhale, look forward, pass through Uttanasana, standing forward bend, Uttanasana, crown of the head drops. Inhale, lift halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, sink back, engage glutes, pass through chair, reach and look up. And exhale, hands through heart, arms relaxing down by your sides. We're going to come into some standing postures. We'll have the left toes point forward. And we're going to step the right foot back into warrior two. Left heel lines up with the right arch. Left knee bends over the left ankle. Sweep the arms up. Gazing over the tip of that left middle finger. External rotation through the thighs. Equal weight in the right and left foot. Pause here. Feel the shape out. You can gaze down and just check on your pose. Bring yourself into better alignment. And then we'll find a little bit of movement just coming in and out of warrior two. So as you inhale, we're going to straighten the left leg. Exhale, drop the arms down to your sides. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, right back into that warrior two. Inhale, lengthen through the left leg. Exhale, arms drop down. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, warrior two. One more time. Inhale, lengthen through the left leg. Exhale, release the arms down. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, warrior two. Pause in your warrior two. Feel the outer blade of that right foot pressing in toward the mat. This time, inhale, reach the arms overhead as you straighten the left leg, lift the gaze to the hands. And then as you exhale, we're going to take that right hand to the right thigh, flip the left palm to the back of your mat, open the chest slightly toward the front of your mat, inhale, lift the chest toward the ceiling, exhale, stay here. Reverse triangle pose, pause. One more big inhale, and then exhale, back through center, arms trapped down by your sides. Shrug the shoulders up toward the ears, and then release. Taking hands to the thighs, so that left hand's gonna stay. Just reach the right arm straight back, reach the right hip back. Start to walk that left hand down the left leg, maybe, but it might stay at the, th at the thigh. Keep the sides of the body long. So you might come into a triangle pose, no weight in that um, hand. So just staying off of weight at the wrist, maybe the fingertips just touch the leg. Right, so you could be up here. 
keeping the sides of the body long. Think about the chest opening here. Just a little twist and triangle pose, chest slightly opening toward the ceiling. Take another big inhale in your triangle wherever you are. And then exhale, rise back up. Drop that right arm down. Turn both toes toward the long edge of your mat. And just reaching out for a five-pointed star. Open the palms. If that feels okay, just stretch through the hands here. Breathe. And then arms drop down by your sides. So he'll walk and step the feet back together. Hi, Rocky. Back to the top of the mat. Shake through the legs. And then once you're at the top of your mat, feet hip lift. Pause, arms dropping down by your sides. Inhale, reach the arms alongside the ears, look up. Exhale, pass through chair pose, standing forward bend. Inhale, lift up halfway, tall spine. Exhale, navel draws in, fold forward, bend the knees, engage glutes. Inhale, pass through chair pose, rise up. Exhale, come see your heart. Arms drop down by your sides, right toes are going to point forward. And we'll step back with that left foot. Feeling out your warrior two shape. Right heel lines up with the left arch. And right knee bends over the right ankle. Arms lift. Palms facing the floor. External rotation of the thighs. Feel out that posture. Gaze lands over the right middle finger, but feel free to kind of check in with the pose here. Feel the feet working evenly. So the weight wants to fall into that right leg, but press through the outer edge of the left foot. Make that left leg and left foot help you. We're going to come right back into that posture. Very Vajrasana too. Inhale, straighten the right leg. Exhale, arms relax down by your sides. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, looking forward, warrior two. Maybe you check in with the knee, that's fine. Inhale, straighten the right leg. Exhale, arms relax. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, warrior two. One more time. Inhale, lengthen through the right leg. Exhale, release arms down. Inhale, lift arms. Exhale, warrior two. Pause. Stay here. Gazing off the tip of that right middle finger. Breathe. This time we're going to inhale as you straighten the leg. Take the arms overhead. Look up. Exhale, left hand drops to the left thigh. Right palm dials toward the back of your mat. Start to open the chest just toward the front of the mat and then toward the ceiling. Exhale, reverse triangle. Breathe. Nice big stretch for that right side body. One more inhale and then exhale. Come back through center, arms relaxed down by your sides. Shoulders scrunching up toward the ears. And then drop and relax. Hands to thighs, right hand's gonna stay to the right thigh, reach the left hand back, reach the left hip back. Maybe the hand starts to walk down that leg, you might stay right there at the thigh, you might walk it a little deeper, just having control there so you're not collapsing into that hand and wrist. You can stay off the wrists even here. Pause and breathe, keep the sides of the body long. Chest is opening slightly toward the ceiling. One more big inhale. Exhale with control. Pull yourself back up. Arms relax down. Both toes, both toes point out the long edge of the mat. Arms reaching up and out. Five point star. Reaching through those fingers. Exhale, arms drop down. Toe heel walker step the feet back together, back to the top of the mat. Feet hip width. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, pass through chair pose, standing forward bend. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, sink back, engage glutes, pass through Utkatasana, standing forward, bend at the top of the breath, reach and look up. Exhale, hands to your heart, arms relax down. And transfer weight back and forth. And then we'll come into uh, standing uh, balance. So you can stay at the top of your mat, and then we're just going to uh, transfer weight back and forth a couple times. Feel yourself in mountain pose. Feel the abdomen engaging to help you with your balance. We're going to take the hands to heart. We're going to find tree pose, shasana. So weight's going to come in the right leg. 
And then we're gonna open that left knee up to the left. So there's an, an openness across the front of the hips, like the, the hip point staying squared forward as best you can. You can come to the ball of that left foot to the inside of the right ankle. You could stay there. We're gonna work with some hand mudras here. So you might just stay there. You're already challenging your balance just because you're not on that foot completely. You could lift it up to the calf, anywhere but the knee. You might help the foot up to the right inner thigh. But try to keep that sense of uh, broadening there at the front of the pelvis again. All right, so hands to heart, finding balance. And we're gonna take um, Earth Mudra. So on this side, we're gonna take the ring finger to the thumb, and then the other fingers will extend out. So the tip of the ring finger touching thumb, tip of the ring finger touching thumb on both hands. Reach that left arm up, right arm down. Pressing the tips of those two fingers together and then extending through the other three fingers on the hand. If that is not happening with your wrist injury, just don't worry about it. Um, whichever hand is injured, just let it relax. Okay, pause and breathe wherever you are. So earth mudra grounding us. Take another inhale, and then exhale, release the mudra, release that left foot down, shake through the hands. So that mudra speaks to our root chakra. Transfer weight back and forth, and then we're gonna come to the other side. So for mountain pose, start to root through that left foot and left leg. You could start with hands to heart, just feeling out where you want the foot, right? So follow the foot opening through the front of the hips. You could help the foot up to the thigh, you don't have to. Hands to heart, finding balance, rooting down. And then we're gonna find life mudra, so palm mudra on this side. Um, this is basically the peace sign. The thumb is gonna come to the tips of the pinky and the ring finger on each hand. Pointer and middle finger extend out. So there's intention in these mudras. So if it feels okay, again, if you have the injury, just relax the hand. But if it feels okay, put some intention in the hands. Left arm relaxes down, right arm reaches up. Pause and breathe, grounding down through the solidity in that left leg. This is another mudra that speaks to the root chakra. Take another big inhale. And then exhale, you can release the hands, mudra, release the right foot, shake through the hands. Transferring weight back and forth. Back to the top of your mat. Hands to hips this time. Inhale, lengthen up nice and tall. Exhale, let the hands slide down the backs of the legs, relaxing the nervous system, standing forward bend. Hands drop down to the floor, soften through the knees, relax the head. You could shake yes and no through the head. A couple of big breaths here. Inhale, you'll lift up halfway, hands to shins. Pause, bringing the head in line with the heart for a few breaths. And then on an exhale, we're gonna find our way back down to a seated position, any way that's comfortable for you to get there. Back down into the seat. And then we're just gonna take cross-legged, comfortable seat, sitting up nice and tall here. We're gonna breathe in, reach the arms alongside the ears. And then exhale, open and twist to the right, left hand plants to the right knee, right hand plants behind, open chest. Inhale, reach it back to center, reach the arms up, square the chest forward. Exhale, open and twist to the left, right hand to left knee, left hand drops behind. Shoulders stay dropping and open. Inhale, reach to center, exhale to the right. Keeping length through the spine, inhale to center. Exhale, drop to the left. Even if the twist is really tiny, keep the spine tall, doesn't matter, long spine. Inhale, reach. Exhale, little twist. 
Keep the chest lifting. Inhale, reach. This is the last one. Exhale to the left. Inhale, reach. Exhale. Hands come up your heart. Arms relax down by your sides. Take the knees into the chest. Reach for the opposite elbows, hugging around the shins. Lifting up nice and tall. Pause, breathe. And on your next exhale, let the back round, chin to chest, forehead toward the knees. Some deep breaths in the back of the body. Breathing in, come back to center. We'll walk the heels forward. We're going to come down to the back. So any way that it's comfortable for you, come on to the back of the body. The knees are bent with the soles of the feet on the floor. Arms relaxed down by your sides. And think about kind of trying to flatten the shoulder blades to the floor. So you might have to just tuck the shoulders under a little bit. And you'll feel that want to arch the back and then disappear that. So flatten the scapula and then the tailbone reaches toward the heels. From there, you're just reaching the tailbone toward the heels right now. We're going to lift onto the elbows, so the palms are going to open and face one another. Spread the fingers out nice and wide again, only if that feels okay for your wrist. If it doesn't, bring that hand anywhere that it feels okay. If it's okay, try to really stretch through the fingers again here and through the palms. We're going to inhale, lift the hips up toward the ceiling. It doesn't have to be a high bridge. Press into the elbows, exhale lower. And inhale, lifting up, chin is staying away from the chest. Exhale, lower. Two more times. Inhale, lifting up. You might come a little higher. You might not. Exhale, lower. One more time. Inhale, lifting up, pause. If it feels okay, hands come into fists and then open. Fists, open for three. Pressing into the glutes, opening the chest. And then last one, take the hands to the belly, lower all the way back down. Soles of the feet come together, knees splay out to the sides. Pausing here. Hands come to the outsides of the thighs. Help the knees together, hug knees into chest, rocking back and forth. And we'll take the supine twist. Knees are going to fall over to the left side first. Knees rock over to the left. Chest opens toward the ceiling. The right arm extends out to a T. Pause and breathe for three. Drawing breath into the right side rib cage again. Slow, even long, full breath. Two more times. After that third exhale, Knees come back into the chest. Rock it back and forth a couple times. Breathe in, exhale, knees fall over to the right. Left arm extends out, chest opens towards ceiling. Pause and breathe for three. Direct the breath toward the left side rib cage. Slow, even long, full breaths. Two more times. After that third exhale, knees draw back into the chest, rocking back and forth. And then we'll roll off to one side or come up straight to a seat. We're going to take for our final resting pose, we're going to take legs up the wall. So uh, hopefully you have some wall space. If you don't have wall space in your house, if you have a block, you could place a block under the sacrum and lift the legs. Or um, even better than that, though, is if you have a chair or a couch, um, then you can have the knees bent and rest like the calves on the seat of the chair or couch and back flat on the floor as you're reclining. If you have a wall, though, feel free to use the wall space. So the easiest way to get into legs up the wall is to bring one hip up to, you can bring it all the way to the wall or close to it. 
And then you'll have to support with the elbows if you're not using the wrists to recline back and to lift the legs. If the hamstrings allow it, the sit bones could be all the way up toward the wall. Okay, if the hamstrings are tight, um, then what will happen sometimes is the back will lift off the floor or the knees will bend a lot and that can be uncomfortable. So we want the back to be grounded. If the hamstrings are tight, just scooch farther away from the wall and then having the heels rest. So make it comfortable. Pause, bring your arms wherever they like. I like mine overhead, back of one hand resting in the palm of the other. But they might just stay down by the sides or hands to belly, it's up to you. Find somewhere where you're completely relaxed. Let the breath go once it's settled in, just let it go. Feel everything soften and relax, any tensions leave the body. Tensions draining out of the feet, draining out of the lower legs, draining out of the thighs. Any tension draining out of the pelvis, draining out of the abdomen, chest. Swallow once more, relieving tension at the throat. Separate upper and lower teeth again, releasing tension in mouth. Sweep the tension off the eyes and brow line. Draining further tensions out the crown of the head. Sweeping them out of the length of the arms. We exit the center of the palms of the hands and the fingertips relax. And dropping the body down toward the floor, heels toward the wall. The muscles of the body completely release, letting the breath move however it like. And just observing this time of quiet, just this brief moments of quiet, noticing. And you continue to notice the body and breath and notice the movement of the mind, whatever is coming in and out, just observing. Next few breaths come in a little bit deeper, bigger in and out breaths. Start to find some wiggle in the toes, some wiggle through the fingers, stretching maybe through the arms. And then we're going to bend the knees, just bring the soles of the feet to the wall for a moment, hands to belly if they're not already there. Pause. Start to bring focus to the feet and the lower legs. Feel just from bending the knees, just feel that difference in the blood flow. And then when you're ready, take your time. We'll roll to one side of the body. You can rest the head and the arm. Pause, really notice the blood flow coming back in the feet and legs. Take your time when you're ready, coming up to a seated position. You can maybe do those bigger breaths to arrive in your seat. So that was just a really simple way to find a little bit of movement. Um, if you have something going on with the wrists, um, let me know if you liked it. I could, I could make a lot, um, we could make more of those classes off the wrists. So there's a lot of stuff we can do without bearing weight on the hands. So let me know if you liked it. Um, if you want more off the wrist stuff, then Rocky and I will deliver.